This bicycle fork welding fixture was the first tool that I machined for the purpose of bike frame building. I made this in 2012. Let me tell you all about it. This guy allows you to weld a bicycle fork. So you just prep and miter all the tubing and then uh, this you know, wouldn't be assembled yet, right? It'd be separate pieces. You slide the steerer tube in here and you clamp it down with this guy and then you would have your, your fork legs. And then up here, this is a Anvil Bike Works dummy axle. I designed this to work on my own and then I ended up just using these. And not that elegant, I'd just use a C-clamp and I would hold that on there so you had to get it located but easy enough to do that. And I would get that centered up on there and then I would, I would hold the dropouts in here on the ends of the dummy axle. And then the fork tubes I would have bent or they'd be straight leg or whatever they were. This would be clamped down here. If I needed to get the, uh, the fork crown or the fork legs leveled, some fork fixtures have like a bar that lifts up here that you can, uh, you can spin it and get it touching against both. What I would do, is I would set this height gauge and I would kind of feel along the top of one side and I'd swing it around and I'd feel along the top of the other side and I'd get it so that they matched. And then I would know that I was, I was level here, I was level here, and, uh, and that's how I would do it. It's not the most sophisticated. Back here you have a screw and uh, you loosen this and you can slide this block up and down. It's very simple. If you have a longer fork, then your crown is gonna be closer to this back block and if you have a shorter fork, your crown is gonna be further away. And so this, this whole assembly here doesn't slide along a scale or something, it just stays put. And that works pretty well for the kinds of forks that I was making. So, uh, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of background in machining when I made this. I didn't know the best places to order raw material from. I didn't know, you know, exactly what kind of tolerances I was looking for or how to prove that if you put a, a straight tube in here over all this length, it would end up exactly in the right spot. You know, I, it's not the most precise thing. And I, I learned a lot over the years about how to do this kind of stuff better. Like if you look at this block and you look at this bar, they're really only mated to each other by these screws down here. And a better way to do that would be actually to, to put precision located holes here for dowel pins and then also on this and so that when you bolted it together, the bolts provided the clamping force and then the pins provided the registration to make sure it was aligned accurately. I had never really thought of that or been exposed to that sort of thinking before. So I just clamped it down and kind of tapped it around until it seemed like it was kind of pointed in the direction that I wanted it to and I hoped that it would stay straight. Same thing on this end, you know, I think it's held in with screws here, but you could have one screw in the middle and you could have two locating pins or something to that effect to keep this end square so that your, your fork legs end up being the same length. There's all different ways to do it. So, uh, you know, you load all the pieces in. If you want to adjust the rake, you know, which is the center line of the fork and then how far the dropouts sit above that, uh, measured, you know, square to the, the axis of the steerer, if you want to change the amount of rake, uh, you can loosen this screw on the end and you can slide this block up and down. And I just used a pair of calipers and some Sharpie and I made a rule there. It's not the most accurate thing, uh, but you know, that's what I did when I made this and I, I haven't made a lot of forks lately or I probably would have made an updated fork fixture. But this was how I kind of got started with tool making and you know, tool making for the, for the purposes of bike frame building. I included a, a center hole there with a counter bore and that way I could have put what you see other people do on some fork fixtures, I could have put a stub off of here with a screw going in, and then you put that stub in your park uh, bike stand, your bike repair stand, and that holds your fork fixture so that you can spin this thing around all different ways while you're welding to get comfortable. What I found was that actually, usually, uh, I would just grab it like this in my vise, or I would just lay it down on the welding table and I would, you know, when I was welding forks, I would kind of tack weld on the top in the different areas and then I flipped the whole thing over and I still had pretty good welding access here. I could weld in on the back side of the fork crown and stuff. And then, uh, and then you can lay it all, all different kinds of ways to get access to it. So, you know, um, 
it's not that refined of a tool the way I did it. You can see this is just the raw extruded bar on the outside. And aluminum is relatively straight. It's not really that straight. This isn't a precision tool the way that I did it. Uh, the surfaces are not necessarily flat. They look like nice flat planes, but if you get in there, you'll see that, you know, over this two inch span, this is one by two aluminum bar stock, uh, over this two inch span, it's not necessarily the most flat surface. You know, certainly uh, you might have a little deviation from one end to the other, or it might bow a little bit. And so, uh, you know, you would really want to start by machining that whole thing away or starting with a material that had uh, a straighter tolerance. However, for a fork like this, uh, with these uh, dropouts on the front, you know, if, if after you finish it, if the wheel doesn't line perfectly in there, you can just take a round file and touch up the location of where the axle sits. And that, it's actually, not, it's, a, it's a hack. It's not actually a bad way in the beginning to get your forks to come out straight. You know, ideally you have a system that's uh, repeatable and reliable that you can count on. Uh, but you know, in the beginning as a, as a novice frame builder, uh, a couple minutes with a file when you're done will get you where you want to go and it makes the whole process and the requirement of the tool a lot easier. So this was a DIY project for me way before I had much machining know-how or chops and I made this on somebody else's machine. And uh, you know, for, for other people who are looking for DIY uh, frame building tool projects, I think this one's pretty accessible. If you're making old school forks like this that have quick release dropouts, uh, Really, it's not that critical of a tool that everything needs to be dead nuts, you know, parallel and square. And, you know, it's, it's just not as critical. If you're making forks with through axle, that becomes a lot more finicky and a lot trickier uh, because you can't just touch up the, the dropouts with a round file if one happens to be a little bit shorter or longer than the other. So if you're making bikes with uh, through axle, I would consider maybe just buying a fixture from Anvil or Sputnik or something. But otherwise, uh, it's a pretty approachable DIY project. And so I just wanted to share some of my my thoughts on this and my experience with it um hope you liked the video hit that subscribe button we'll see you on the next one